Okay, we're gonna do one more derivation. We're gonna derive the Gaussian two-point rule. I've got most of it on the board already, <clears throat> but the two-point rule means you're gonna take two points in between A and B, and you're gonna use some weight values, C1 and C2, and that C1 times uh, f of x1 plus c2 times f of x2 is your estimate for the integral. That means we have one, two, three, four unknowns. Uh, the two coefficients are the two weighting factors and x1 and x2. Do we take the endpoints? Do we take ones in the middle somewhere? Well, <clears throat> since there are four unknowns, we're going to say that f of x is a cubic because a cubic has one, two, three, four coefficients. <clears throat> and we know how to integrate this exactly. So the integral of f of x, this generic cubic, is, and I integrated it and plugged it in from uh, the limits a to b, and you get a0 times b minus a, a1 times b squared minus a squared over 2, plus a2 times b cubed minus a cubed over 3, plus a3 times b to the 4th minus a to the 4th over 4. Okay, now we are going to go back to the two-point formula where we want this integral to be c1 f of x1 plus c2 f of x2. And using our function up here, we get c1 times f of x1. I left off the subscripts there. <clears throat> Plus c2 times f of x2. That's f of x2. And that gives us. Um, I did the algebra really quickly, and I isolated, I got a0 times a coefficient, plus a1 times a coefficient, plus a2 times a coefficient, plus a3 times a coefficient. So now we have two representations of the integral, and all we're going to do to figure out what c1, x1, c2, and x2 are, are like I said over here, equate the coefficients of a0, for example. <clears throat> so set c1 plus c2 to b minus a. Set c1 x1 plus c2 x2 equal to b squared minus a squared over 2. Set, trying to do something different each time. Under the squiggle is a coefficient of a2, and then the coefficient of a3, you would set c1x cubed plus c2x cubed equal to this. You get four equations, and when you solve them, you might get multiple solutions, but choose any appropriate one. Basically, what I'm saying is if a solution comes up with x1 or x2 being outside of AB, throw it away. And if you equate the coefficients, and I'm not going to write it out and do all of the linear algebra, equating the coefficients gives the following. C1 is equal to B minus A over 2. And C2 is what as well. C1 and C2 are half of the interval width, each one of them. Now X1 and X2, a little more complicated. X1 turns out to be B minus A over 2 times negative 1 over radical 3 plus B plus A over 2. That's the midpoint the end, the, this is here. And x2 is going to be almost identical. It just, this is going to be a positive number. So b minus a over 2 times 1 over root 3 
plus b plus a over 2. <clears throat> so we can see that the x and the 1, x1 and the x2 are symmetric. How do we know that? Well, they're equal to the center point between a and b plus and minus the same distance. So the two-point Gaussian quadrature rule, I'll just call it the two-point rule, is the integral of f of x dx <clears throat> is approximately equal to c1 f of x1 plus c2 f of x2 um, from a to b using substitutions above. I'm not going to write out the whole thing. <clears throat> so you'd have to replace c1 and c2 with this and this. And you'd have to replace x1 and x2 with this and this. So it looked like a, 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 a pretty complicated formula in that case. And any integral from a to b that is either linear or quadratic or a cubic, <clears throat> so a degree at most 3, this is going to be exact. Um, and they'll be approximation for anything of degree 4 or greater. 